had some incredible presentations today and we're going to have more. We'll start again with a regular session. But I just wanted to say that in these messages, there's been so many common themes about the necessity of coming together, the necessity of being focused, uh, the necessity of looking ahead and using World Food Day as one of those vehicles for coming together and for finding new ways to put solutions out into the public and to gain the public support and then the political will to make happen what we know, the ways that we know how to bring hunger to zero by 2030. 25 years ago, on the 50th anniversary of the Food and Agriculture Organization, and today's the 75th, uh, a group of us from the Twin Cities partnered with farm organizations around the world um, in hosting a reunion up in Quebec City where the FAO was founded of the original founding people, folks who were still alive who had been part of that very special day when they brought this idea and made it into the UN agency, the specialized agency that it became. And it was part of a group of gatherings on the 50th anniversary that IATP put together um, on the UN, the Bretton Woods institutions, the World Bank, the IMF, the High Commissioner on Human Rights, the International Trade Organization. But what was special about that gathering of the founders of the Food and Agriculture Organization is that they were able to reflect with each other. And for all of us who were young at that time, young being a relative term, they were able to say, you know, we were thinking about both the producers and production. We saw the destruction of the food and farming economies by the Second World War. And all of them at that time had also seen it, the destruction after the First World War. And they knew from uh, just, you know, all of the information coming together that about half the world was in desperate need. The World War II really expanded into Asia dramatically. And so about half the world faced hunger and we needed to figure out how to both meet that immediate need and then also how to really build a kind of sustainability and re resilience into the future. And um, some of our most important leaders at that time, some of our military leaders who saw the kind of desperation and also saw how the destruction of the land and the water and all the other things. And so having that opportunity to hear from those who were founders of the, you know, the Food and Agriculture Organization made me very interested when they began to host the idea of a, of a World Food Day every year. Because I understood that underneath that idea was a remembrance and an honoring of that time and that place. But it was also saying we needed to be developing this uh, going into the future. And um, I, in preparation for today, I did a little digging into Global Minnesota's files of uh, the things we've done over the years. We were very active in World Food Day activities. Uh, and I wanna just share for one minute, uh, uh, one of the, the flyers about a day, uh, World Food Day back in 1986. This was actually, I think the sixth year um, in the United States and in our region where World Food Day was uh, part of the mix. Uh, and I, I wanna show you this flyer were two purposes. One, what's the same? And the second, what's changed? Might be difficult to read, but many of the organizations that were active at that time, Church World Service, food banks, food shelves, um, the, the organizations that we think of in the agricultural part of the university, um, our own organization, Global Minnesota, had a different name then, Minnesota International Center, with a special Minnesota Awareness Project about hunger in Minnesota and around the world. Save the Children, another organization that's still active. But it starts by saying that World Food Day is observed worldwide to focus attention on food and hunger problems. The goal is to get people of the world more directly involved and search for solutions. This remains part of the objective for World Food Day, but it also now includes the commitment 
the aspiration, the energy to also say we want to achieve zero hunger by 2030. So let's apply the solutions we know and we've heard many today, uh, but I think that's an important change that's happened. It goes on to say World Food Day was observed in 140 countries. Um, the United States, the National Committee had over 300, it says over 350 member groups. Um, here in Minnesota um, at this time, uh, we were able to have a very strong uh, uh, gathering because we could, you know, it wasn't COVID at the time. And so it was a national teleconference, including a Boya dinner, everybody very happy about that. And our keynote speaker was Arlen Erdahl, who was at that time in charge of the national recruitment and training for our volunteers in the Peace Corps. He was a congressman from Minnesota. He was also a secretary of state honoring, honoring the secretaries of state. And he went on to become the executive director of, uh, of health, international health volunteers, one of the most important of our NGOs. But pull, pull up the next slide. I want to show you what the day was like because that was a very um, important time. Uh, and you can see if you can uh, get in close enough, the morning of that day, was a teleconference, meaning it was broadcast from Washington through satellites and shown on big screens at the campuses and churches. And it had international leaders, Mohammed Yunus, who went on to be a Nobel Peace Prize winner, like the World Food Program, uh, the newly elected head of the World Bank, um, important leaders uh, of all kinds from around the world. And then the afternoon was the local discussion. Um, and you can see in this, there was a lot of focus on domestic hunger and the health implications, focus on children and child survival, uh, focus on regenerative and organic agriculture, and a kind of understanding that the day needed to be a mix of looking deeper at problems, looking for solutions, and celebrating together the big dinner in the evening, the keynote speech. So we can see that for a very long time, we've been using this day, World Food Day, to help bring us together to remember, to refine, to deepen, to build more relationships. Uh, and we have this opportunity again today, even in our last um, presentation, we heard where the World Health Organization and World Food Program saw their work in this next year. Uh, Professor Sachs spoke about the idea of a big focus on ridding hunger in the United States as a very large priority of the Sustainable Development Solutions Network. So we can imagine that World Food Day can continue to have that kind of uh, impact. We can continue to gather. It's easy to remember because it's always October 16th. And we can use it to be a place to benchmark, to say, okay, these are the things where we were last year. These are what we want to try to accomplish. We can do that within our own home and family, whether it's on things like food waste or growing food or being part of you know, some program or making a contribution. We can do it in our neighborhood, in our community, in our state, in our nation for the planet. We have the headlines that tell us that Hunger in Minnesota is at Great Depression levels. Today, we've heard some of the statistics at the national and global level. We know it's a very serious time, but we also know that many times it's the seriousness that grabs our attention, that pushes us to do something, that then introduces us to a new partner, a new network, a new collaborator, and in the creation of those new relationships, new ways of thinking and new possibilities emerge. So much of today has been a uh, big picture, but with a real emphasis on coming together and creating that future. Our next panel, which will come up after a little tiny break, which will be coming up pretty soon, we're gonna focus on that word you've heard a lot today, regenerative, regenerative agriculture. Uh, Mark Muller, who's the executive director of the Regenerative Agriculture Foundation, um, who for decades was the person responsible for McKnight's Foundation's work 
protecting the Mississippi River and the farmland and the nature and the watersheds of that region. Uh, Mark has pulled together an amazing panel of people to talk about not just regenerative agriculture in a technical way, but really to tie it and knit it together about the future of farming and the future of food. And so we will be right back in just a few minutes. So